Hello there, and welcome to the latest in our MarTech series of webinars. This one uh, is focusing on five steps to transform digital experiences in the financial industry. My name is Joel Vardy. I'm president and CTO at Agility CMS, a headless CMS that you can use to create composable DXPs. And I'm really excited to have um, a, a guest here with me, and I'll, I'm going to let him introduce himself and talk a little bit about himself. He's from the industry. He's from IBM, and I just love listening to him talk, uh, and it's going to be great. It's our privilege to have you join us today, Cal. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, my name is Cal Salem. I'm an associate partner with uh, IBM uh, with focus on financial uh, industry-related systems and uh, digital transformation initiatives. I've been in this domain for the past 15 years with focus on digital transformation across uh, large enterprises. Um, my background comes from an engineering focus, uh, but influenced by uh, business driven um, strategies and uh, direction for enterprises that I worked with. So bringing both worlds to more of a, a realistic uh, adoption of what technologies would work best for enterprises to make them uh, ready to make more money in the market. Um, please um, feel free to connect with me as well um, through my LinkedIn profile and we can get it from there if you have any uh, further questions for me right after this session. Awesome, Cal. Yeah, just to talk a, just a little bit more about your experience. So what you're going to talk about today is coming from both the technical and the sort of architectural um, experiences that you have with current and past financial institutions that you've been working with, correct? That's right. Um, yeah. Those institutions were leading as well as creating and helping with bringing forward uh, spaces for innovation where they needed to revolutionize their customers. Right. Experience, change the way they drive the industry. Right, right. Uh, the engagement rules uh, of the whole game right now is taking a completely uh, different approach. And, and those organizations, whether they are in the core of banking uh, or um, I would say money management across the world, they all interact in the same arena. And, that, and that's where my experience is coming from. Awesome. Well, today we're going to be dividing uh, this webinar into three kind of topics. Uh, and the first one is we're talking about customer journey. Uh, Cal, when you and I chatted before this, you know, I think that was really one of the things where you focused on a lot was, you know, in terms of the outcome of the customer journey and how that's evolved. So my first question to you would be, you know, how has the customer journey evolved in the financial industry? Um, tremendously. Yeah. <laughs> If you consider the shift that we've experienced in the past two years, um, suddenly the pandemic is here. Right. And suddenly no one is able to even approach um, banks, bank branches, or interact in person, which right. in a way uh, brings forward a challenge, a new challenge uh, to uh, the banks on how can I configure my relationship with my customers, my, my source of income. This is my true asset to grow. And everybody took a step back, literally. They, they just raised the flag of hold. We can't continue like this. We need to find a way to truly drive this relationship in a completely different uh, method different medium and through that now we have to understand what can and cannot our customers do in order for us to deliver our services to them right. so the power shift there from the enterprise ruling and driving how the market is behaving um, that power tended to um, move towards the customer right and now i will uh, if yeah. i can't reach your branch what do i do if you're a mobile app is short of certain um, um, essential services that I need to, to process on a daily basis, weekly or monthly, whether I'm a, um, a retail customer, a small business or, or a large business. How do we do this? And I believe yeah. um, most of the banks uh, did that. They stopped. They looked at their strategy and figured out that they're a little bit behind. They're a little bit short of answering for that hard question of do I really know what uh, my customer journey looks like given the changes and the ability of my customers to adapt to a new reality and how can we adapt to survive 
Otherwise, the exit of this market is pretty easy when dominant uh, um, players step in with uh, major steps, uh, major changes to their customer journey and how they, they get their customers engaged. Yeah. So, you, you know, you talked about the idea of, you know, they're, are they in a branch? Are they on a mobile app? Are they, you know, on the website learning? And, and part of this would be, you know, potential customers coming online, uh, coming into, you know, hey, what products does, uh, does this institution have that I might want to use? But also further along through their journey as they're, you know, been longtime customers and now how they interact with the bank is changing. Um, all of that is kind of caught up in your answer. That's, that's great. And then moving forward, you know, how do we generate trust with those customers? Because a lot of the times in that journey, that's not necessarily in person anymore. So it's not a person to person trust. How do, how do we generate that trust with our customers? Uh, let's talk about the medium first. So okay. if I'm a customer of a bank, I would not differentiate between the means of how do I get to interact with the bank. So the omni channel concept evolved a while ago. This is not a new concept, but has it really seen the light the way it's supposed to? Um, I believe not everyone was successful with translating omnichannel in the best way possible. Right. Now, do I really need to be there in person in order for me to get my uh, transaction completed or my service offered um, or my engagement with the bank on certain information, understanding what the next step for me uh, supposed to be, uh, um, that became a major question there. What about privacy? What about security? What about comfort and trust that we need to build with our customers that in through any medium that you establish or connect with the bank through, you are very well taken care of. And from there, what if I want to switch that medium from uh, simply trying to do that through my mobile, but I reach to a certain limit where I can't complete the transaction. I need to have someone from the bank side helping me with certain verification. Um, and uh, bit by bit, we started seeing more tools coming to life where uh, I can verify you through your voice in addition to some information that you would provide me. But you can do that through the contact center. You can do that through your uh, um, bio uh, verification tools on your mobile, whether it's fa facial recognition, um, um, iris scanning, uh, or if it's uh, a fingerprint. Um, people in the past were not really that comfortable uh, with, with such approaches, but nowadays it became more convenient. So mm -hmm. that kind of trust and reliability on the bank to ensure that the back end on their side and the front end on their side as well is secure. It's, it's there to serve you and serve you personally and specifically, uh, supported by a platform that is powerful, available 24 by 7, definitely drives the customer to engage more with these uh, um, newly invented ways of conducting business. Um, yeah. I'm going to hint at something here, but I'm going to, to comment more on it later in, in our conversation. So what if I want to drag you into my metaverse branch? Right. What if I'm creating that virtual experience to be completely uh, somewhere in the virtual world rather than you stepping in in my branch as a bank and having someone in person, blood and flesh, to serve you there? Would you be comfortable with this? And what elements of uh, reliability, uh, confidentiality, uh, and in engagement success do I need to embed in, in that experience. This is just an open question. And as we go through this conversation, I'll try to unfold uh, some of the elements that we can introduce and some of the banks, how they've looked at it in order to make this uh, experience more fruitful and engaging. Yeah, th there's two parts of what you're talking about that I think I'd like to comment just a little bit on. First one is omnichannel. That really resonates with, uh, I know a lot of our current customers and folks that we're working with in, in the CMS industry because you know headless CMS, really deals with omnichannel approaches for content um, just to get, you know, a branding message across all the different, you know, mobile website and all the other places where, where your content lives. And I think that goes hand in hand with trust, you know, a consistent message and consistent content across all of those spaces is really, that's, that's what agility is all about. But then when you look at the inversion of control with trust, I think, you know, traditionally and from my perspective anyway, as a banking customer, a lot of the times with in terms of identity, it was me proving to myself that, you know, the bank can trust me and yes, I am who I am. And, you know, you do the signatures and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of flipped over from my perspective now where 
I get to choose which bank I trust more based on how trustworthy their practices are, like you were talking about with like bioscans and things like that, um, and the ability for them to show up in the places where I expect them to be. One of those might be the metaverse at some point. Uh, it's really interesting to explore that evolution. Um, furthermore, to what you just shared, um, if you are going to create such an experience, you need fuel. You really need a lot of thrust in order for this to work properly. And data happens to be the mine of gold that you should always keep looking for and digging as deep as possible in order to get the best out of it. Right. Technically, when you meet with executives in banks, the first thing you should offer them is that I'm not here really for your business. I'm here for your data. Right. Because without it, I can't create business for you. Right. And I need to understand what type of data do you harvest? How do you uh, uh, harness that data? How do you keep it safe? How do you analyze it? How do you go through that uh, virtual treasure that could turn around uh, your business into a money-making business through platforms that you can set up to consume that data in a way that gives you insight, present to you a way, a better way to engage with your customers and always keeps you at least two to three steps ahead of right. what your customer is thinking. When do I need to approach them, not wait on them to approach me? And I'm not just talking about marketing campaigns here. I'm mm -hmm. really talking about an in-person direct contact where right. I'm calling my customer to let him know, now you have an opportunity to do this with what, um, um, what do you have with us and, and this portfolio of investment or next step of uh, um, probably bringing your mortgage to life uh, right. or how you can manage your uh, tax-free uh, accounts in a better way. Uh, I shouldn't be waiting on them. I know they're busy enough not to think about this every day and night, but this is exactly what I need to do as a bank, thinking on their behalf. And the more omni-channel platforms are spin-off uh, to serve this purpose, the better uh, my approach would be fueled by insight through that uh, data analytics and understanding of what the next wave of services that I should be crafting and offering in the market. Right. Yeah. Big. That whole concept of trust and data is a really big one. So how do we deliver a consistent experience across all of these human and non-human interactions that you've been discussing here, you know, how do, how do we make sure that what the customer gets from a bank in an experience that they trust, how do we deliver that? First and foremost, I'm going to start with the most obvious statement. Don't make it the whole experience. Don't make it rely on requirements. Don't make it rely on steps. Make sure that the experience is lively and fueled with compassion, fueled with understanding, emotionally intelligent, and enterprise cognitive. That being said, you do have multiple elements here to take care of. First, the customer, and then your workforce, as well as your core systems as a bank. Right. But let's not forget about the ecosystem, given that FinTech is now playing a role in bringing more customers to banks as they're attaching their services to what the bank has uh, already been uh, offering, but now they're expanding the horizon to engage with uh, different types of apps, different types of experiences coming from elsewhere that the bank need to uh, be ready for. Um, also, we are all uh, guided and guarded by regulation, uh, compliance uh, requirements from uh, agencies of the government to make sure that we're continuing to be within the uh, rails as well as the boundaries of what's legal and what is not legal. So all of these elements coming together, they really define how the human interaction, when the human interaction, how the human interaction can cross roads with the non-human. And by saying this, I'm not just referring to a matter of uh, chatting with a bot uh, on the website or through your mobile. It's really about the overall experience, the overall process run from front end to back end where it requires human intervention to verify, to understand, to analyze and give it that lively look of what's above and beyond what bots and automated systems are already extracting, analyzing, recommending and forwarding um, the, the task 
uh, to the next step where it'll be taken care of. So the integration between the human element and the digital workforce that you're creating within the bank now is becoming more of a complementary element to your overall omni-channel experience. And I'm going to give you a quick example here where if, if I have any issues with, or let's say I have a question, the first and foremost uh, go-to channel would be pick up the phone and call contact center. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, is not supposed to come as a surprise knowing that most of the big enterprises offer or have to experience about 95% of customer interaction through contact center, uh, a major element of how we make uh, our customers feel welcomed and served uh, personally and specifically towards their exact needs. But that's quite a heavy load to deal with. Right. Yeah. Then what I need to do is offer my contact center agents tools and ability to anticipate what this call is all about, knowing that my customer has already started or tried to uh, solve this or um, tackle this through their mobile app or online, but they did not succeed. And that's why they had to pick up the phone and call right. while they have tried. I need to provide that sort of intelligence, if I may say, uh, to my agent to quickly prep the answers, guide the customer through, how can you get this done now through me, but next time through these other channels that are available to mm -hmm. you where you can be verified, where my systems can serve you directly without you having to wait on a specific hour to call. So 24 by seven becomes the theme of the bank service. And if we uh, take this globally, it becomes more of a, uh, um, an inclusive and widespread service to my customers anywhere in the world. I don't think we used to have that in the past. But right. now, alongside with how the pandemic has redefined our engagement uh, criteria, our, our engagement experience uh, with enterprises like banks and others um, that are highly affected by everyday transaction, the bank became more sensitive to offering these capabilities in the back end to automate as much, to digitize as many um, processes, tasks, mm -hmm. and procedures. Uh, less dependent on people, this does not demean their importance, rather to assure and present a reliable end-to-end -end process from front to back-end systems that could be legacy, yet they are still um, as valuable as new systems as we present them. Right. Excellent. So that takes me to the, you, you kind of started to bring together the idea of technical systems and I appreciate that. Um, so we've got, you know, folks, folks are phoning in, maybe they used to be going in, you know, into the branch, uh, you know, in person, but now they're phoning into these contact centers and then we want to make sure that we have as much content and answers and solutions for them in a potentially a non-human form, like an app or maybe our bots uh, that can answer those or some, some sort of way they can get these information and answers in technical systems. Um, but I think for me, technical systems also thinks I think about, especially with regard to digital transformation, the idea of like, there's a lot of old bank processes that are around that have been around, you know, forever. Um, this is kind of talking about the transformation of those as well. Um, but I think with regard to customer journey is really important. So my first question would be, you know, how are things shifting in the back end for financial institutions? So technically, you're, you're opening the door to a very um, difficult questions where a uh, set of questions, in fact, where SVPs, EVPs and VPs would always look at their legacy systems and say, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with that big load of inheritance since the 70s and 80s? This bank is <laughs> running on COBOL with two guards uh, taking care of the system. Uh, but um how do I how do I transform? I can't. It's it's not an easy mission. It's it's um, as difficult as a, a life and death decision that I have to make. I can't pull the plug, and I can't just put a lipstick on a pig and and call it transform. Right. Technically, given how advanced we became with digitization and automation, I don't really need you to uh, transform anything at the moment or make such hard decisions on the spot. You may take your time because now I can uh, extract the type of data, automate the type of step and task that relates to a full-fledged customer journey that I'm uh, offering a service through and uh, continue to digitize 
end to end, even with legacy systems, even with mainframe uh, code and, and top of transactions safely, securely, reliably, and turn that automation into a lively, engaging experience for my right. customers without having them to endure um, what's so-called, oh, you have to wait on this for uh, a week or 10 days before we get it done to you. We need to check some records. We need to review some uh, paperwork and generate it for you to sign. All of that now can and will continue to be done uh, digitally, uh, use of bots, use of OCR, use of uh, integrated systems and uh, solutions that can simply uh, connect to your backend and extract the type of data that um, fulfills this process completely uh, with compliance, um, no questions asked. Now, as regulators are also realizing uh, the importance of uh, uh, allowing this to happen right. and supporting this to happen, uh, it will eventually drive more um, value out of legacy systems into the advanced systems, the transformed, harmonized, and um, uh, upgraded systems that the bank uh, is going to adopt. Um, yeah, interesting. It kind of sounds like, to me, we're taking these really legacy backend things. Sometimes they're not digital. We're going to digitize them and create almost like a composable service for them so that they can work as part of the greater technical ecosystem that the institution has. Am I interpreting that correctly? Absolutely. And, and let's be realistic. No one is going to quickly or uh, eventually dump everything they have in the back end for the sake of being called transformed or for the sake of being called a digital bank. Rather, create a digital bank from scratch. It'll be a lot easier, more reliable and trustworthy than trying to uh, uh, you know, recreate history in a form of a, a modern existence or a modern uh, presence for, for my customer to believe in the services that I offer. And, and that actually has been uh, the uh, behavior of some major banks in, in the U.S. where instead of trying to recreate themselves internally, they went on and uh, created a whole new bank that offers a full-fledged digital experience. Right. And it is called a digital bank. It is ready to be an open uh, 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 or ready for open banking, ready for integrated integration with uh, fintech, ready for any type of audit that the government would want to uh, apply to it, ready to engage with, uh, um, I would say, cross-continental uh, services with other banks across the world, uh, with other geographies, with other types of uh, customers and different types of customer experiences still using the same systems. I don't have to recreate them. Right. So that opened the uh, leader's eyes, the industry leader's eyes to, um, if I can't recreate it, then I can create completely uh, a, a new experience based on a new platform and get that multi-cloud uh, engagement of uh, different services, applications, and uh, SaaS platforms as part of my existence now, which was not part of my existence in the past. Uh, do I have to keep everything hosted uh, on site and guard every single bit of data that I have? Or can I really extend myself to a private cloud um, uh, where I can uh, extend my services better and uh, more reliably to my customers? Right. Yeah, that kind of really leads me directly into the next question that I had was, you know, what is the impact of, I call it software as a service or a cloud-based approach, uh, or even just really a services in terms of like composable services approach. What, what has been the impact of this kind of shift? I would say I was one of those who are privileged to have lived through this era where when, when I used to speak to CIOs at banks and uh, senior vice presidents um, leading a, a big chunk of the business at the bank who are thinking and wanting to innovate around their service offering, always stuck at the fact that, oh, I can't really use cloud as a method because of security, mm -hmm. because data needs to be on-prem, because of this and because of that. Those were not really alibis. They were, that was the reality of what they had to deal with because the regulator at that time uh, from the government side or from the overall global system, um, um, the, the ecosystem, the business to business uh, connectivity, the ecosystem to ecosystem connectivity also did, required and demanded that um, you need to stay content. Mm -hmm. You really need to stay guarded. You need to have that fortress. And they are right. We're, we're not dealing with something 
uh, easy to um, uh, mess with here. This is people's data, information, privacy, uh, confidentiality, money above all, and uh, business continuity. If anything goes wrong, then how mm -hmm. do I even operate? Yeah. But then all along, almost every um, SaaS um, operator out there, uh, without hinting to, to names, we all know them, whether they're big, medium, or small, started working on their own version of industry-leading solutions, specifically around banking and services that integrate with banking. Right. So with this, they, they created channels that are secured, that are approved, that are reliable, um, uh, I would say recognized by regulators, um, easy to integrate with. Uh, through banks and introduced the customer experience um, completely revolutionized through those systems. So I'm not uh, I'm not leaving uh, any uh, space uh, or place for doubt here by the bank and the bank leaders and the industry leaders that this is not an experience they would want to offer. Yet I'm also influencing the customers uh, of the bank to adopt this quite easily, quite fast. And I'm also using channels, medium and uh, ways of new life, social media, uh, to get them to engage with the new type and, and way of engaging with your financial transaction uh, and uh, uh, bank engagement um, uh, in a completely different way. So that being accepted offered the bank a chance to look at this as I would love to actually uh, uh, adopt this. The integration on my side will become easier given that digitization and automation can connect me to my back end. Uh, it, it is not going to be mission impossible to um, help my customers um, uh, adopt and consume my services in a way that reflects the importance of these SaaS systems. Yet it's going to be also a strategic partnership between um, uh, the SaaS and cloud uh, operators to continue to care about revolutionizing that experience. So now the responsibility is shared between the bank and the partners of the bank through that ecosystem to help customers better uh, improve and engage with these uh, processes and services and products that the bank has to offer. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we really see a true evolution, a revolutionary evolution of these services. So how are they being combined? You talked about how we're you know, creating these services that are easier to integrate, easier to kind of bring, bring together from a SaaS and cloud perspective. Um, how are they being combined to create these kind of composable solutions in your experience? Um, if we look at the reality of the banking science since the 60s and 70s, um, it hasn't really changed much. Uh, you know, the bank takes my money, keeps it there, it operates it elsewhere. Uh, there is interest that like, the whole concept uh, of the financial industry didn't really change as we thought it would. It's the technology that is carrying it, that right. is giving it a different perspective, a different picture, painting more of a uh, a resilient and agile interaction medium for the bank with its customers, whether it's uh, retail, small, medium, uh, um, or large businesses, governments, and banks to banks as well. Um, that by itself help banks seeing um, a different um, potential for engaging more customers, right. for engaging better uh, technology that helps the bank quickly get through processing uh, um, requests, services, and offer, uh, I would say, uh, better uh, um, engagement methods uh, right. with, um, with the customers. Um, and I'm going to focus more now on introducing uh, bots where you don't have to uh, really engage with a person here. Uh, automation where uh, you can now run through your mortgage application end-to-end -end online without having to engage with anyone. While this is one of those crucial steps that the bank always focus on making sure it's on paper, I need your signature, a lawyer might be even there uh, to, to, to verify or a background check. And so everything related to this massive and most important uh, um, uh, process is being done automatically. Right. It's being uh, integrated uh, with all the systems around the bank and outside of the bank uh, to uh, enable the customer to get an answer on the spot, whether they're eligible, uh, whether they're, uh, um, um, I would say, uh, able to go through the rest of the process. And when they are, 
they still do not need to see somebody in person. Everything would be uh, offered to them as a bundled uh, service all together through one screen. And if need, uh, I could have a video conference right on the spot right there. And I have my verification systems uh, all available to me to, to run through that process. Um, on, uh, on that note, you can see how uh, digitization uh, of uh, the process and the automation of the tasks and the integration between the back end uh, and the front end and the experience that has been recreated for the customer while you're still call it mortgage, while you still call it uh, applying for a new bank account or opening a new one uh, through your existing, it, it less requires people to get in, in engaged mm -hmm. on the bank side but more uh, trustworthy, easy to go through uh, experience for the customer from outside the bank. Yeah, I love how you, you draw. Everything technically almost always draws back to that customer journey, especially with the idea of it's, it's not a step-by-step, -step, it's a non-linear approach, yeah. it's lively, um, and, and it really is, is important to sort of bring these together for the benefit of the customer. Uh, I think that's really important to, to, to continue to highlight. Um, which takes me to the third section, and you've started to talk more about things like bots or other kinds of ways that you know human non human interaction works together. Let's talk about teams and tools. Um, with my first question here on this section is that who who are customers interacting with mo most? You talked about that call center, the where they where they call in. Um, we talked about branches a little bit, but who how are the, who are the in terms of like human and or non-human uh, sort of entities, who are, the, who are the customers really working with? Um, customers would want to contact the bank only if they have a question to ask or a transaction to go through. Right. Uh, you would, from time to time, get them to uh, request a new service, but this is not a daily thing. What I would want to uh, really learn more about what I get from the bank comes through me naturally, as I said, picking up the phone, calling contact center, expecting someone to hop on the phone, answer my question after going through at least a minute or two of verification until I reach to a point where, oh, now you know I am who I am and you can offer me that answer of what relates to me. Um, the issue with that is time and time on both sides, the customer yes. side as well as the bank side. Uh, but most importantly, uh, the 24 by 7 availability of service now becomes limited to people's ability to support uh, working times that can answer for your questions as a customer. The introduction of uh, cognitive processes and bots, as well as uh, robotic uh, automation of certain um, uh, processes within banks, uh, truly took time to come to life. Right. Let's not forget, banks are a core component and one of the pillars who are carrying massive number of employees within right. any given uh, economy. Uh, so governments rely on banks to continue to retain and uh, carry uh, a specific, or I would say a range of uh, employment uh, percentage there to help with giving people the chance to live and continue to grow. And when we're uh, introducing exponential technologies that take it from eight hours a day to 24 by seven type of operation, we're looking at a completely different composition of uh, natural human resor uh, resources and workforce uh, versus 24 by seven, agile, ready to scale uh, digital workforce. Mm -hmm. And that uh, ratio of digital workforce versus uh, a human uh, workforce has no specific number or target. It's really about freeing people to do what is better and more important than repetitive steps uh, being part of a process or offering uh, an answer to how much is in my bank account right now if I don't have time to just check it on my mobile or I ran out of data, I just need an answer. So I don't need to put an employee behind uh, that um, that phone or behind that desk to answer that question. Now, a bot can do that, mm -hmm. uh, as well as bots are not only to serve customers who are um, um, outsiders uh, to the bank, but the workforce within the bank require that service as well. So most of those, those agents sitting in, in contact center or elsewhere in the bank as well are equipped with bots that quickly fetches information right. uh, 
uh, and bring it forward, put it on one screen from different systems across the bank, from different arms of the bank, all in one 360 view of a customer who, when calling this bank, I do have my investment portfolio with you, my business account is with you, my personal mm. account is with you, my, my insurance is actually with you as well. Above and beyond, I would like to expand elsewhere. You should not be operating or processing or having uh, more than one profile that identifies me in, one, in each one of those services separately from who I am. So one central view of what I am to you as a customer allows you now to establish those bots to work for you as uh, a bank, as a bank employee, uh, as a workforce within the bank to bring forward all that information instantly and inform your customer with the best next step. While they don't know this, they're still talking to someone, but that someone is supported by the different platforms yeah. that will enable them to be successful with uh, carrying this forward as, as a service. Yeah, we've seen we've seen the same thing um, where, you know, from a content management perspective, we're, we're delivering content to the outside world for sure and websites and apps, but also to internal teams just to provide them, you know, with all the the, the consistent content and experience that the customer is going to expect when they're talking to someone as well. Right. Um, so definitely both of those, both of those things there. Um, and then, you know, what does the new workforce look like? You've, you've kind of talked about, I think, I think what you're moving towards is that, you know, we're not trying to replace people. We're trying to make people more valuable in the workforce in terms of human resources. Uh, but how do you think that balance is going to, you know, move forward? The shift towards digitization and automation will continue to increase. It will go towards, uh, I would say, um, more dominant uh, position versus um, the regular conventional workforce that we are all accustomed to. And again, this is not a threat that everybody needs to deal with. Rather, it's an opportunity for expanding uh, banks' ability to work with customers on above and beyond the trivial services that they're uh, um, just wanting to interact with the bank around. And right. that being said, um, banks more investing in uh, uh, automating and presenting uh, AI capabilities, cognitive capabilities, um, uh, introducing neural networks uh, that will support um, I would say a full-fledged metaverse uh, type of experience could literally save me the time as a customer to step in a branch physically to get my uh, uh, questions answered by a human being, yet that human being is needed elsewhere to work on, on a pure new process, a new service right. that is offered to the bank's customers and uh, help them go through a smooth um, uh, journey again with um, a completely different type of uh, service that they need, yet they did not realize. Social media would help me educate them about this. And right. all of these connected uh, dots that we're creating around the interaction of uh, the digital workforce that will continue to exponentially uh, and uh, elastically offer services to the uh, bank customers and uh, the real life workforce uh, that um, need to operate in order uh, to make that uh, digital workforce even have more meaning. We'll continue to collaborate together uh, through the upcoming years. And I think 2025 would be a, a landmark, will be a target uh, for the world to see an elevated uh, uh, set of services and ways of interacting with enterprises. And that's due to the uh, emergence of uh, 5G. Uh, it, it'll make it more easy uh, for um, uh, people to interact with not just uh, um, businesses and enterprises, rather among themselves. Um, and uh, the spread of uh, digital services would become more seamless, uh, uh, less problems with, with connection, more focus on the service and the outcome. Right. We'll all have the devices. We'll all have the connectivity. Uh, 2025, we'll check back in at that point and see and see if you were omniscient. This has been great talking to you. Um, just a little bit more about Agility CMS. Uh, one of our customers, Scotiabank, has definitely, I think, over the past few years um, in their expansion into Latin America um, with some of the websites that Agility hosts for or, or hosts the content for, uh, we've certainly seen a lot of the same kind of things happen 
with them uh, in terms of that financial institution. We also work with a company called um, CPAO, CPA Ontario, um, where as a, as a uh, sort of a, an adjunct service uh, for people who work at financial institutions and with financial institutions, we've certainly seen the human element there in the kind of messaging uh, and the kind of membership that they have with their organization. So um, happy to continue to discuss uh, the, the whole idea of financial institutions with headless CMS and composable systems um, with you. Um, this has been great. Thank you so much, Cal, for, I just love listening to you talk. You have such a great conversational way of explaining complex concepts, um, especially with regards to the evolution of the industry. Uh, with that being said, we're gonna continue the conversation. You follow us at Agility CMS on Twitter. Um, we have more webinars coming up in this series. Uh, you can find those at agilitycms.com slash events. And by all means, get in touch with us via email um, if you're interested or in becoming a customer or if you wanna talk further about what our offerings are at Agility CMS sales at Agility CMS. This has been great. Thanks so much, Cal, and hope to talk to you again sometime. Thank you very much.